Okay, this is part two, and this is a, a good time to mention why I put this copy above it. This is what I'm going to work with, and this is my original, so I can always go back and just my thinking is whatever's on top is the best, like the penthouses on the top floor. Sometimes I put things to the right, so anything to the right is right. And this is a good time to save it. I'll go to my one logos, and it's here in the Gulf Coast. And I'm going to just give it a name, double click on this, and call this GC E. F C U and a lot of times I will put the name right in here so that I can do a, a text search for it and then say okay okay so now I'm going to take a look at this and hit F7 to zoom in alt C I'm going to go through a couple of little cleanups, uh, but this artwork was pretty good, so it doesn't need too much, but I have some tools here that are real nice to use. This is called FitArc, and you can see this arc was pretty nice, but I also have this as a tool called Linearize, so you can see I could linearize this point from here to here, and maybe on this letter L. Now, I can also... Uh, make straight corners if I wanted to on this logo it really doesn't matter because remember we're going to be using a round tool so it doesn't much matter uh, but anytime that you see a lot of points someplace like these right here when you do a fill pattern the these points will propagate into a lot of points so the the fewer points that's there the more cleanup uh, the the less number of points are in your software or in your logo and it will engrave a little bit faster and be a little bit smaller file size but most of this is pretty good and I'll show you those kind of things later on but now I'm gonna look at this logo and I'm gonna take a good cross-section of it this is probably the best right here because it's got you know as small a lines as it's gonna see and I know that the height of this is probably only about a quarter of an inch but I'm gonna use my island fill and I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna use an 020 cutter and I like using either 39 or 40 percent overlap uh, keep the source force pocket connections and no final cleaning pass and then say okay and I can look at this and say well this is going to take this is for this logo you've got one two three four five six seven eight so that's eight lines of engraving so that's quite a bit if this is going to be a name badge if it's going to be a big door sign or a plaque maybe i'd leave it at that but i know this is going to be a name badge so i'm going to try it at an 030 cutter and this looks a little bit better this I've got one two three four lines here some of the fatter lines have with this will actually be two lines so you get six lines here I could even try going just a little bit bigger and maybe go uh, 35 uh, and sometimes what happens when you get to 35 or a number that's a little too big you get some really funny looking fill patterns especially on the O's so I'm gonna undo that maybe I'll change it to 34 let's just see what 34 does 34 is a lot cleaner so I'm gonna leave it at 34 that looks pretty good now another thing that I need to kinda of look at is knowing that I'm using an 034 cutter if I use this tool to make a circle and alt R and then function 2 and make it 034 exactly here's the size of this tool so when I do a single line pass on this tool this lettering is going to get a little bit wider than that so let me just shrink this down a little bit and the width of this now uh, is about 0.03 so I am going to go back and look at at this and I have a hotkey for selecting my machine path it's control M 
where's it alt in well keep in mind some things don't work when I'm uh, in this Camtasia program so anyways I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select just this first section F7 engrave and I'm gonna take this down to an 032 cutter and say okay and I'm gonna come over here F6 to zoom out is my hotkey for zoom out 032 say okay and I'm gonna come over to just the logo say okay and I'm gonna go under here and save it okay uh, now is when I'm going to do some text substitution. So I'm going to just zoom in right underneath this federal. Now I know that an 030 cutter or 032 that I used up here, I'm going to use a cutter down here. So I'm going to start with my text. And I'm going to now, one of the things is I'm going to change this to about 0.1 high letter so that when I click here, it doesn't become some real large letter. I can always enlarge it. And I'm going to type in F E D E R A L credit. Now, the reason this is so spread out is because on this text here, if I click on the baseline and I get my text tool and I select something and click on this little down arrow, here's my text data now because I had already manipulated this data that's why it had come in at point one and then this is the spacing between the letters so it turned out that about 160 was about right now keep in mind I am gonna push these letters exactly where I want them so I'm gonna click on the baseline F6 to zoom out and bring this up and I'm going to zoom right here and I'm actually going to move these let this lettering and I can see it should be just a little bit bigger so I'm gonna make it just a little just a little bit bigger and a lot of times I will intentionally make it just a little bit bigger in order to um, engrave just a little bit bigger uh, knowing that if I'm off just a little bit uh, the engraving will still look good but the smaller I make the engraving the more mushed uh, small lettering becomes so a lot of times I'll cheat just just a little bit in order to know that I'm getting a nicer looking letter even though it might be just a little bit bigger than what it's supposed to be so I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna do a little trick here I'm gonna select just this much now if you remember the text is here but I'm only selecting just part, this part of the logo and I'm gonna go in their group and I'm gonna freeze it and then I'll go over here and hit control F which is another hotkey of mine for freeze the reason I do that is because when I select this text I am now going to convert it to curves so when I select this I can delete all of this very easily and you'll see that in just a moment so I'm gonna move this back spread this letter E a little bit here's the letter D and you'll see a lot of this will keep repeating repeating so in other words the lettering is not exactly the same but you can see that I am matching it up very similarly and if I really wanted to you can see this I can take this point and actually drag it out a little bit usually those kind of things are not as critical I can use the point editing if I want so I can hold the shift key down holding the shift key down I can move it out straight so there's my pushing all my text in play and here's the letter R I'm gonna stretch it to the left and if I wanted to I can do a little bit of a bulge right here so the R has that shape to it move this to the left and you can see it it's a repeat effort repeat repeat and this is easy to stretch out whatever I need looks about right the letter C let's stretch this over here 
and I can see this closes up a little more so I'm gonna get my point editing and I'll just delete a few points here delete a few points here since this letter C didn't close up quite as much pressing the arrow key to the right and left bring it out to the shape use my move bulge bulge this out just a little bit letter E and again you can see how, how things are repeating 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 and it just takes practice to do this but you can get very very fast at it clicking away left mouse click Move over to the right uh, sometimes um, when you're trying to move just uh, one letter like the letter I it sometimes doesn't like to move real well so sometimes moving two letters at the same time is a little bit easier every once in a while the point will disappear on you so there's some tricks and obviously some problems with uh, Casmate uh, especially since it's running in XP which it was never never designed to run in XP so here I'm going to take the N sometimes I move it over sometimes I stretch it usually when I, when I have the letter I I will select two letters get that in the center obviously no stretching on that necessary and this is the letter O real easy to make those match up pretty close and if there is a letter that duplicates uh, you certainly could copy it if you did a lot of work on something uh, on this particular one it's just as easy to just retype and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and now I'm going to click right just zoom in right here and F7 I use to zoom the group and I can just delete that so it leaves my um, single line text and then delete this one so here's my logo pretty much made up uh, except for you can see here's the logo here's my my fill and then here's the actual logo now what I don't want to do is engrave this outer logo because if you can imagine you put a cutter here and here this these points are gonna touch and I can kinda show you that I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna draw a circle this will simulate a cutter Alt R F2 and I'm going to make the height of it 0.032 which was the cutter size that I used and I'm going to drag this down here and put this on my tool path F7 to zoom in on it so I can get it exactly perfect and you can see and F6 there's my cutter now if I did a trace of the outline here I'm going to hold the control key and put it up here you can see how close this cut is going to go to each other not so bad if you're cutting with vinyl with a very thin knife or a laser but if you're cutting with a rotary tool you can see the effect so I'm gonna hit F7 so I can zoom in on this and I can see that there are some broken pieces all of this is one contour and here's some tricks that I do I'm gonna use my cut points and I'm gonna cut it here and here and Basically, these are uh, full uh, shapes. Oops, and what I should have done is this right here, and this one right here. I kind of made a mistake here because I was talking. So now this is this is all one shape, and now I can delete my original. This one's only one. This one's only one. So I can delete this. Now let me give you an idea of what I did. All of the machine paths are all a full shape so if I wanted to engrave this and I knew they were very close to touching and if I hit control pound I can see this will start engraving here go around like that and finish lift up and go here and go around and finish up right here well wouldn't it be smart if these were very close together what if it started right here went around went to this line went around and finished and never lifted up well that's the same thing with this logo that's basically what I did so if I am to take this and this I'm gonna cut it and basically what I've done here is I've actually 
cut the points away so now I'm using this tool which is weld points and I'm welding this one together and this one together obviously let me show you I'm gonna leave it right back at the same point control R to redraw and I'm gonna delete this point right here that I added and I'm gonna put a cut point right here so these are two set uh, two line segments that run together and why it works well I don't know but it this is a great feature I can just tie this together and now this will not lift up it will start here run this box then run this box and never lift up so when I've created this logo these are all single entities and as you can see I'm going to do a couple of these as I go along I can see that I, this one's all one group this one's all one group I know these are going to be all one group you can see it does a, a pretty good job uh, oftentimes on the O's let's see is there more than one no nope. control redraw so there hasn't been any here I'm sure there's got to be one um, here's something that I as an engraver know uh, which could happen right in the center here this is a spot that often will not engrave properly so sometimes I'll just drag a point and just stick it in there and if I want to really zoom in and kind of do it a little bit nicer rather than doing it real fast like I did I'll do something like this because I know that this is a point that an F7 will sometimes not engrave properly other things that I may even do is drag a point up from the center here drag a point down from here and sometimes in here I'll do the same thing Let me delete this one delete this one and I will continue down the line uh, deleting items and delete that, delete this, delete this, delete this control R to redraw make sure all of them are so now what I'm going to do is I can see that I've got all my text in here let me get rid of this I don't need that that was just to show you and I'm going to save it now I'm going to do my sort left to right and out and I'm going to take all of this and go control X control V so that it's at the end of the drawing I am going to alt S for make this my start point so 51 52 53 okay and now uh, what I'm going to do is take this whole section just because it's easier and go control X and control V and then I'm going to take this bottom line now you can see this is 55 57 59 it actually goes 54 55 56 57 so you can imagine if I left it it would be going back and forth up and down so this is just a nice trick control X control V and you can see now it's 51 through 53 54 57 62 71 and then it goes back to 72 through 89 and of course now is a good time as any to save it you may want to turn off your uh, contour order and maybe even turn off your control points so you can look at your logo to make sure that you know the R's are still there the letter D is still there every once in a while when you're using this normal block font you'll lose some of the lettering and you'll, you'll have to fix it but everything looks good so turning this back on and this is a good stopping point